Hey guys, so I am going to answer the questions that were asked on Instagram. First of all, to everyone that just kind of replied and wrote really nice like messages back, thank you very much, that was really kind of you guys. And to those who made smart ass comments, they didn't go unnoticed. So thank you to all who responded. So let's just get right into it. Where are you from? I was born and raised in Santa Barbara, California. So no, I was not born in Greece. That's often a question I get. I was born in the US and when I was about 17 or 18, um, I was recruited to compete for the country of Greece. What throwing events did you do in the past? Um, I started out like any, anyone else. Uh, usually in the US, kids mostly throw the shot put in discus. So yeah, I started the shot and grew into the discus. Really didn't love it at first or either at first. Next question, how did you get into throwing? So I remember the first time I threw shot, I had finished, I think like the 1500 and I was in like second or third grade and my parents wanted me to just try the shot put because I was a little bigger than the other girls. And I threw like 18 feet with the six pound. I got like second to last and I hated it. I was like, I'm never throwing this again. So then from there, I kind of found my way to the multi events and I was doing the pentathlon as a kid and so you have to throw shot put. I really didn't take it seriously until I got into high school and I was told I would be probably a better suited thrower than I would multi event. It was a little dense for a heptathlete. What age did you start throwing? Would really say I started actually seriously when I got an actual coach. Uh, it was my sophomore year of high school. Best thrower in the family? I mean, my oldest brother, Steven, he was a decathlete and he competed at the University of Arizona. I mean, for a deck, he probably weighed less than I do now and he threw over 50 feet, I think like 15, 20 something. I don't know, I'll have to double check that, but I mean, that's pretty darn good with 16 pounds. You know, obviously Nick, I mean, Nick was a 2016 Olympian and be multiple time European championship finalist. So I don't know. That's a hard one to tell. In all seriousness, I think I really benefited by being the youngest. My parents really didn't know what to expect. I remember my brother Steven, he would just got the USATF manual. He created his own workouts. They, they really had to navigate track and field and where we were living, how to find coaches and stuff. By the time I got around, they kind of knew the routine. They knew people in the community and they also knew the college recruiting process and a lot more. And so um, I think I really benefited by being the third child. What advice would you give young throwers? I would say young throwers, uh, I, I know high school can be difficult, not every high school is equipped with a proper throws coach, which can make it really difficult and really make it hard to seem like you can make it to the next level. Um, I would recommend looking into any type of like clinics. I remember going to like uh, Ironwood Throws one year and I was just amazed at how many kids were there to like throw. And it was just a whole camp dedicated to all throwers and I loved it. And uh, you would just meet a bunch of different coaches so you're just constantly getting different feedback. And that's really like a good thing. I don't think that that's hurtful when you're new and, and, and inexperienced and just looking to develop in any way. Also what's super helpful is the fact that like everything is accessible online. There are so many elite um, throwers that are offering advice and opinions and that are more than willing to help kids. Um, you look at pages like uh, Ryan Whiting's, he is constantly doing open questions to respond to his followers, but he's posting not only his elite athletes like Chase, uh, Ely, and Nick Ponzio, but he's also posting his developmental kids to kind of show the progress along there, which I think is really cool. And someone like Martin Marich at UVA Throws is really growing his platform and just making it totally ac accessible to understand how recruiting works, how, you know, technique stuff works, he's constantly posting videos, different videos, not even only of his own athletes and doing technical analysis um, of those videos. So I think that there are tons of online uh, avenues to find information. And my last advice for probably young throwers, if you're willing to go anywhere, there is a spot in college at the next level for you. If you're willing to go anywhere, if you're willing to compete at any level, there's usually an opportunity for you. So if this is something that's a true passion of yours and you really love it and you really want to compete at that next level, moving from high school to college, go to a junior college, compete there and then move up from there. Or if you are going straight to college, there's so many colleges within division one programs, but then you have division two, division three, NAIA, the opportunities are limitless, I think. And if you are willing to make that move, um, and do the research and find a program that's best fitting for you. Like don't give up on, on the possibility to throw at college because it's, it's definitely there. 
How can I get into college as a foreigner? I would say if you know you want to come to the US and compete in the NCAA, the sooner you know, the better. Because often I find that a lot of foreign athletes like know too late that they want to come to the US. It's not uh, something that can happen because they're too late into the university there or things just don't time out, they're too old, it's gonna be too much work um, and they're trying to do it last minute. So I would say figure out, like, yes, that's my ultimate goal. The sooner you start, the better. Figure out your grades and, and what exactly you need to present to the college coaches. Um, and do your research on colleges because there are too many times I have seen foreign athletes here that are kind of bummed and, and feel like they're stuck in a situation because they didn't get to know the college before they actually came out here. Get the academic side taken, taken care of and then start contacting coaches. And if it's easier for them, if you are saying, yeah, I have this test score and I'm already clear on this, then they're going to be that much more willing to work with you and, and um, find your spot. And it's really just good to reach out because so if they can't take you, off, more often than not, they'll be able to kind of put you um, in the direction of a coach and a program that is willing and has the space for you. Cool nose ring, where'd you get it? <laughs> well, smart ass. My nose ring, I got like, uh, I'm a junior year of college. I've been debating for a long time. And I think I did it for like an essay. I did pretty well on it, I think. And I wrote some really deep, meaningful, multi-layered essay about what it meant to me and freedom and stuff like that. Why did you transfer? Um, for those who don't know, I started my college career at UCLA. I just felt like I wasn't getting uh, the absolute most out of what I could um, from UCLA, and so I decided to transfer. It was a really scary decision, but I didn't look back. I think it was a really good decision of mine, and it actually just pushed me to grow way more on my own by moving and leaving California and coming to Tennessee. By leaving, I had to come to terms with what I needed to change and fix within myself, and I think that UT provided that perfect structure for me to grow and figure that out within myself. Um, so yeah, transferring isn't gonna solve all your problems. It's gonna it's also, it's really going to exemplify what you still need to work on within yourself. So, I mean, obviously UCLA is a great school and has a story track program, but not every school is for every athlete. That's why we don't all go to the same school and all have the same coach. And that's why we don't all train under the same training system. I had really great times at UCLA, but transferring was a really good decision for me. And I think it just pushed me to grow into myself a lot quicker. But yeah, it was good. Training differences between UCLA and UT. Schedule, program, and expectation. In my experience, the two were very different. Um, now, UCLA has a different coaching staff now, so I can't speak on that. Um, it was a, under a different system when I was there. Um, and I would really just describe the two uh, programs as UCLA being uh, a lot more probably hands-off and UT really, really hands-on. Um, and a lot of structure to it, um, which is something I think I was looking for leaving high school, going into college. And you also have to look at the differences in the conference. So you, you were talking about the Pac-12 versus the SEC. And for track and field, I would say the SEC is really cutthroat. Um, the Pac-12 has its pockets and um, has some really top level people. Um, but I would say like the feeling of walking into uh, an SEC championship or Pac-12 championship had really different weight to it. And I think that has to go with the, the entirety of the, the team school. And um, so I think that that plays into the expectation that was put on us um, at Tennessee versus UCLA. I think I felt a double, different level of expectation. You need to be contributing to the team and being a point scorer. And this is our you know main goal at Tennessee. UCLA, um, it was what you made it. And uh, for some athletes, that worked really, really well for them. You know, you look at someone like Julian Ruck, who thrived under that type of system. And, uh, you know, someone like my brother, I mean, my brother loved it, and he loved his time at UCLA. And for some people, that works. Um, but I don't think I was ready for that type of hands-off um, training. I definitely just wanted a little bit more of a vision and um, to work with someone like, all right, these are my potential goals. How can we work to get there? Which is something that Coach Noel did right away. I think I went in on my visit and he had like three years written out on his whiteboard. Um, that's just the type of you know coach he is. If you're a thrower on that team, he's going to do what he can to um, make sure that you're set up to achieve your personal goals. Yeah, in that sense, I think uh, I don't think I was really prepared for that type of hands-off program at UCLA. 
and uh, coming to UT had a lot more structure, um, which has given me now the confidence and that built up in training to where now I can have that kind of independence and confidence to go and take throwing sessions by myself and, and certain stuff like that. But I would say that's kind of the two differences I, I felt the most. Um, now, both have seen success, so it just depends on the type of athlete that you are. So yeah. How did you get big quad gains and what are they in inches? I don't know. I don't know what my quads are in inches and I don't have a tape measure. And I don't know what would be good in a quad inch size. Why do you hang out with Nate Harper? I don't know. Why did you transition from shot disc to hammer? Uh, as someone has once told me, you do not choose your event, your event chooses you. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, I really, this is my first full year training hammer on its own. So I really think I've learned a lot. Um, every year I've thrown hammer, I've also been throwing shot put and discus. I don't think it's a matter of choosing. Um, you know, that's just the one I see myself having and my coaches see myself having the most potential in. And I'm also really enjoying it. And if you're not enjoying an event, it's just not worth it to do it. Trying to add a turn in the hammer, looking to add a third turn, any drill advice? Um, I am not a coach. I don't know what would be best, but I would say my true freshman year at UCLA, hammer practice meant drill work. It meant you grab a stick and you just do turns on a straight line. Now in my first full year of only throwing hammer, so I, all last season, I just did turns on turns on turns. So. I would recommend to just do like stick drills and try and do multiple turns six to eight at a time and get really comfortable with that. And then when you can like get a hammer and do multiple turns, you don't need a release, just like do turns that get comfortable turning. And just know that, you know, don't go balls to the walls. First time you're gonna do a three turn, just like ease into it, get comfortable. And then you'll find yourself able to apply more force and build in the throw as you continue on and you get more comfortable. Who is the best hugger? Deanna Price, you know you are the best hugger and you knew that when you sent in that question. So, Deanna Price is the best hugger. If you haven't gotten a Deanna Price hug, you are missing out in life. One, what's something you would tell your freshman year self? And if you could go back, is there anything that you would change in your college career? The freshman me, just calm down. Just relax a little bit, breathe. Um, no, I mean, I went to college with really high expectations as a lot of kids do. Especially, you know, I, I did have some success in high school and um, you don't really know the, the world that you're stepping into in NCAA athletics. And so I, I was always so worried about like the stigma if I wasn't throwing far and thought I was failing day to day. And I put this pressure inside my own head. And in all reality, I doubt people really cared. <laughs> and I'll say as far as like ch anything changing in my, in my career thus far, I mean, I, I can't see myself having started at, uh, anywhere other than UCLA. I got to be on the team with my brother for two years, and, but I couldn't have imagined finishing my career there. Um, but I couldn't necessarily imagine having started at Tennessee my freshman year. You know, making the move from California to Tennessee. Uh, I don't know how that would have gone. Uh, maybe it would have been good. Maybe it wouldn't have been. One thing I wish I would have done more is, is just let myself enjoy more competitions. They're some of the most fun weeks you'll have being an NCAA athlete, and so just enjoy enjoy the moments more. As lame and old as that makes me sound, is it true you got crushed in a box clean competition by a javelin thrower in 2019? I don't know if I would call it crushed, but I did get beat in this random box clean competition that I didn't even initiate. I'll, I'll lay out the story. 2019, just a regular old Sunday lift where we were doing a heavy lift, box cleans. Nick Hassler, he was a javelin thrower on the team. We had like relatively similar numbers, but not in the clean, I definitely remember him lifting a lot more in it than I did. So I don't know why, all of a sudden I was then pitted by Coach Newell to be in a sudden death box clean challenge with him and I lost and I had to do something for it. I think I had to like plank for a certain amount of time, but I wouldn't call it crush. What is your nutrition like? Honestly, my nutrition is pretty boring and pretty routine. Um, I really don't get that fancy. I'm not a chef. I don't chef it up in the kitchen. I keep it pretty basic. I know it works for me. And like every morning I'll eat I'll do like a half a cup or a little more egg whites with, usually I did three, but now since training's not as intense, I do two whole eggs with a bunch of spinach and a little cheese. I just make that omelet and then I make oatmeal along with that. No fancy oatmeal, just the plain ass oatmeal and add some honey and almond milk. Like I don't like having to come home after a long day of training or work 
and having to cook every night. So I'll cook in bulk and prepare it just for the whole week. It's pretty basic. I just do like oven roast chicken and just a lot of different pastas. Like right now I just had like veggie pasta and spinach. So I'd say like the best advice that I was ever given our nutritionist at the time at UT, she was just like, never restrict yourself from eating what you want. That's, you know, that's not going to be healthy for you. You're allowed to eat what you want. Just do it all in moderation. You like to have a little dessert, just make it a smaller portion or find a healthy alternative for what you like. So don't restrict yourself from eating what you want. Just make sure that you're doing it in healthy dosages and in moderation. Favorite post meal or post workout meal? Oscars is the move. Bacon, egg and cheese, breakfast burrito. And if you're feeling extra good, you got some chips and queso with it. I did not know what queso was when I came to Tennessee. No, it's not a real thing, but I eat it now because it's just here. How is hammer training going? Did you find a place that fits your needs for training? Right now, I am really just doing kind of more maintenance work. So just pretty general type of lifting. And for throwing right now, I'm just really doing like drills and churn work. So I'm able to do that at the track still. And once I do start getting into throwing, I do have a place that I can be throwing. How to get strong like you. <laughs> so man up and lift more. I don't know, I was really fortunate. Um, I got really strong when I transferred uh, UCLA to UT. I was generally strong um, from high school going into college, but uh, I definitely learned way more about like technique and um, the types of lifting that Noel was writing here. I dropped all my baby fat, or maybe it wasn't baby fat, it was just real fat. <laughs> I remember when I was in college seeing a video of Cassie Wortman jerking 315 pounds and I was like, oh my god, that's not possible. And then two years later or one year later, I jerked 315. So. Yeah, he knows how to get people strong. Have you ever sat and pondered the purposelessness of our existence? A fancy way of saying, have you ever questioned the meaning of life? Um, as I literally sit in an apartment filming myself, talking to myself, talking about myself. Yeah, it's a little sad. I hope you find your purpose as well. I think that's it. So thank you all for listening. I hope it was something that was informational. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. If there's anything I'm totally wrong about, let me know. I'm sure I was wrong about a lot of stuff. Bye.